questions to have the floor first. Um, most, if not all, of these organizations have a report also in your, in your town report. I'm Tom. Yeah. Um, I'm on the board of Tri Valley Transit. And I wanted to thank you for the past years that you have approved our appropriation. Uh, this is the fourth year at the same level request of $15,000. Um, we, this year uh, has been explosive in terms of rides that have been provided to uh, uh, clients. Uh, we have jumped in Randolph, just in the circulator in Randolph, uh, to 9,000 plus rides. Whereas last year, it was 6,200 rides. Things are just growing by leaps and bounds. Um, we will be uh, us receiving shortly from VTrans two new electric buses uh, that we'll be trying out uh, to see if, if they are safe, won't run out of power in the area that we cover around Randolph. Um, so it's a moving groove in organization. Uh, and we really would appreciate your continued support. The other plug I'd like to make uh, is that because of the increases in demands, it would be great if any of you have time and have your own vehicle, if you could volunteer even a few hours a week uh, to volunteering uh, to transport uh, individuals to doctor's appointments uh, and so forth, so um, if, if that is the case, you can either call TBT and ask for Val, or you can talk to me. I'd be grateful. And again, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Are there other organizations here to speak? We can, oh, there we go, good. Hi, I'm still Ben Ramson. Um, I am not officially associated with the Historic Playhouse Theater, but I moved to Randolph recently, and I thank my lucky stars that there is a historic theater in town. I know that in some folks' mind, this may be more trivial or a luxury or something that is not absolutely essential in the town, but. I would refute that. Uh, the, the theater is frequented uh, primarily these days by seniors, and it's a wonderful place for seniors to be able to go, and by families with small children. And it's not just a fun um, pastime. It's not just a way to entertain kids for a couple of hours. Film has the power to change lives, open hearts, uh, educate, enlighten, and as you've probably seen in the Barbie film, uh, to create a larger sense of awareness for the spectrum of human experience, of gender, of society, and its impact on all of us. Uh, so I would just encourage everybody to not view it as um, a little thing. It's an incredible, incredible gift that this town has a theater, and uh, I hope it is here forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. You'll be able to vote on all of these special appropriations on Tuesday. Okay, we're going to move on to Article 25. We are cruising through this agenda. Uh, I'm gonna read it to you. Maybe, yeah, I'm gonna read it. Okay, it says, shall the town voters authorize any general fund surplus not necessary to level taxes, or which is not applied toward any emergency reserve fund shortfall, and any highway fund surplus not needed to level taxes to be allocated 
20% to the highway equipment reserve and 80% to the highway paving reserve. So what this article about is uh, how, how we will use surplus funds. Come on up, Mr. Bochi. I don't think I need to walk up. You do. You do. I can't hear you. You have a good loud voice, but thank you. I just want to make a, a motion to approve, to approve this article. Um, th thank you for the motion. Um, this is going to be ar voted on by article um, uh, by an Australian ballot on Tuesday. Okay, we're gonna switch gears. So, article 26 through 30 uh, require or invite, they do not require, they invite discussion and action from the floor. Um, article 26 is to hear and act upon any reports of town officers and committees these town reports are in, start on, in this, they're in this report, and they start on page 37. I don't think there are any other supplemental reports. Is anyone aware of any supplemental reports? So if there is no objection, I will accept the reports of the town officers and committees. Um, and hope that you take this book home and read, read them. It's, it's this, it, they're chock full of information for you. So, um, moving on to Article 27. Oh, nope, Ms. Rice, come on up. Did you object to me ac accepting the articles? No, I just wanted to make a comment. Come, come up, please. Nancy Rice again, just a quick question. Um, I may have missed a page in the, in the report, but it used to be that there was a page that um, listed the debts that the town owes, what banks and other information, and I just wondered if I missed that or it, it seems like a piece of information that would be good to know. And I, I suspect it's woven into the other parts of the town report, but if it could be a separate page, I used to appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, thank you. I noticed that the, um, the school district does have an a indebtedness um, notice starting on page 95. I don't see it for the town budget. doesn't mean it's not there. Thank you for the point. So, um, would you please raise your hand if you are f on the budget committee currently and present? One, two. Okay. All right. Um, the next portion of our meeting with, with respect to Article 27 is to elect and fill vacancies on the budget committee. Now, sometimes, um, well, let, I, it's going to be fastest if I have a sense if there is if there are people who are competing for the seats or if or if we have people who want a particular seat. So let's let's talk. Does anyone know the answer to this? Does someone have like a burning desire to explain any of that? No, because we can take it one at a time. All right. So we have a um, we have a term of three years, which expires in 2027. And I'd like to open the floor to nominees for that seat. I just want to give you a preview. We have a seat for two years and, and a seat for one year, so. Okay, let, let me just briefly move on to the seat for two years. Is anyone, is there a nomination? 
for anyone to fill the two-year seat. Okay, so I have a nomination um, for Joe Vosey for the two-year seat. Yep. I'm just getting a sense of the layout of the land, right? We'll go back. We will go back to those seats in a minute. Uh, anyone else being nominated for this, the two-year seat? How about the one-year seat? What are we going to do? I'm worried about the budgets committee. So do I have a nomination for the one-year seat? I'm sorry, last name? Hafner. Ken Hafner, okay. All right, let me go back one more time. So we have a three-year seat, and we don't have a nomina nominee for that seat at this time. For the two-year seat, I have a nomination for Joe Voci. And for the one-year seat, I have a nomination for Ken Hafner. But I'm opening the floor to nominations of other people. I want to give you enough time to step up, or just enough time to make everybody feel so uncomfortable and guilty that they, <laughs> that they just agree. Okay. I can't, who is the nominee? Who, what is the seat and what, who is the nominee? No, I'm not nominating anyone. I just want to say that it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Um, okay. Mr. Voci, do you accept the nomination for the two-year seat? Sure. All right, thank you very much. So let's, let's vote on the two-year seat, okay? This is for the term of two years expiring in 2026. Um, if there is no objection, we will use a voice vote. There is only one candidate. It is Joe Voci. Mr. Voci, you can have an opportunity to say a few words, but you don't have to either. I've spent a lot of years involved in the town budget, from being a public works director for the town. I'm going to stop. I've invited you to speak, and I want to hear what you said, but I can't hear you, so you have to use the mic. I, I appreciate the trying to support my town. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. All those in favor of Joe Voci filling the term of two years expiring in 2026, say aye. aye. All those against, say nay. The ayes have it, and Mr. Voci is going to fill that seat. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to the term of one year. Um, so this is the last uh, term listed. It says it's for a term of one year remaining of the two-year term. So it expires in 2025. And we have one candidate, Mr. Ken Hafner. Mr. Hafner, you're welcome to say a few words. You don't have to. But if you do, come up. Just in, maybe introduce yourself. First of all, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, uh, I am Ken Hafner. Um, I've got some experience with budgets. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember there used to be in town here, uh, something called the George D. Aiken Resource Conservation Development Council. Um, I was essentially the executive director of that. Uh, but it was a credible position. Um, but you know, every year I have to do an annual budget and such, so I'm familiar with a lot of the processes at the time. Thank you very much. 
since there is one candidate and there's no obje if there's no objection, I will use a voice vote for this vote. Again, this is for a term of one year, remaining of a two-year term, which expires in 2025. All those in favor of Ken Hafner filling that seat, say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it, and Mr. Hafner will fill that seat. Thank you um, all very much. We're going to move on now um, to articles one at a time. We're going to do articles 28, 29, and 30. Um, and let me say a few words just about these articles. Each of these articles requires um, a, to, to, to go forward, and they don't have to go forward. You don't, you don't, you're not required to take any action at all if you don't want to. But if you want to take action on all three of these, We'll, one at a time, some will give an, the body an opportunity to move um, that we adopt the article. The article must be seconded, and then we'll have discussion um, and possibly a vote. Um, so let's take up Article 28. Article 28 reads, shall the voters authorize the select board to appoint a town clerk as provided in Title 17, Vermont Statutes Annotated, Section 2651E. Is there a motion? I'm not making a motion. I'd like to speak to this. Um, I think we have to have a motion to have any discussion. Tell us your name. Matthew Johnson. Matthew Johnson. Is there a second? Second. And tell us your name. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded, and now would be a good time for some discussion on that. subject to the whims and whimsy of the select board. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for your comment. Come on up. I see uh, Ms. Mizuko way in the back. Thank you, Madam Moderator. My name is Joyce Mazuko. I was the town clerk and treasurer for the town of Randolph for 23 years. Uh, this is my first time since 2021 coming back to town meeting, so it's nice to be on the other side of things and um, to see a lot of familiar faces. Um, I have very strong opinions about the position since I served in it. Um, there are a lot of things that are done in the clerk's office, and um, I truly believe that it is very important to have an independent voice within town government that is not just the select board. Um, each elected office, the officers have their own sets of duties that they are required to do under statute, and um, I, I truly believe that um, someone who is appointed um, would have less of a uh, desire to oppose something that the select board may say because their position is in jeopardy if they take a position that they oppose. Um, so for myself, I, I, I truly believe that we need to continue to have the clerk position as an elected position. Um, and I would recommend people to vote against this article. Thank you very much. Is there, yeah, come on up. Uh, 
just one last, I don't disagree with anything anybody has said so far philosophically, but I also think realistically we have to think about what we're going to do with the people that we have now and the jobs that we have now. Emory is doing us, Emory, I've loved working with Emory as a Justice of the Peace, as you know, someone on the Conservation Commission, as someone who works at the library. It's been lovely, but Emory is done with that job and he is doing us the grace of staying on until we can figure this situation out. And one of the things that uh, may not be apparent, but I believe is true, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, is that if the person is elected the way we've done it, the way I believe Joyce got this job, and the way Emery got this job, that person needs to live in town, correct? Which means that person needs to care enough about the government and work for the amount of money we can pay them, which isn't much, and afford to live in this town, which is very difficult. Right? Um, you know, does anybody here want this job? Nobody ran for that job so far, and so it's going to be very tricky to figure out who's going to get that job. I agree that appointing somebody does have the problems of, yes, having that person have to work for the people who also control their job, but I also think realistically we want someone who wants this job in any way we can get somebody to do that job. I also agree with paying Trevor more money. Um, whatever we can do to get people who want these jobs to do the good work of the town, the way Emory has, the way Joyce has before, I believe we should be doing those things. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other discussion on Article 28? I'm Vice Chair of the Select Board, and the Select Board um, has had a lot of conversations about the town clerk position over the last few years. Um, in fact, when we had this issue come up when, when Joyce decided not to run for re-election three years ago now, um, I was very much in favor of keeping the town clerk position as an, as an elected position. In the last three years, um, we've had enough discussion and I've learned a lot more about how it all works, and I have changed my mind on what I think the right thing for us to do there. Um, as um, Jessica pointed out, in order to be the town clerk, you have to live in town. And I think as she also pointed out, the, the pool of people that we can draw from is really small. And I think that number has actually gotten smaller um, as the nature of the population has changed, as the nature of the position has changed. If we appoint the position, um, we can choose anybody who is legally allowed to work in the United States. Um, it's obviously a much bigger pool. When you combine that with the fact that municipal job positions are getting harder and harder to fill in general, um, we're looking at the possibility of really having a hard time finding someone who can do this job really well, and it's, it is a really important function of town government. We need somebody who is really top rate. Um, if we elect someone, we, we might find someone who does that well, um, but I think there's also a significant um, risk that we elect somebody who does not do that position really well. Um, I do really understand the concerns about having the select board appoint somebody and having that person appoint, um, um, basically um, report to the select board, that is a legitimate concern. I think in practice, it's a really minor issue. Um, and you know, when when you go to vote for your select board members, um, you know, we serve at your at the will of the public, and so there, you do ultimately have that check. Um, the other piece of that is that. When you, when you report to the select board, you're not reporting to a single human being who can really kind of tell you what to do. You're reporting to a body of five folks. And so the authority there is much more diffuse. And so I think the, the risk of real sort of nefarious manipulation that's being alluded to here is, is really pretty unlikely. Um, on the other hand, it's not, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say it that way. 
Um, there have been cases over the last number of years in Vermont where folks have gotten into that position um, and have caused quite a bit of trouble um, before we've been, people have been able to get them out of that position. Um, and so I think basically we're, we're going to weigh two risks. On one hand, we have the risk that the select board would do something improper in terms of their authority over that position, which my feeling is that that's real, but really very small. On the other side, there's the risk that we could have someone elected to that position who is not no good fit and does not do a good job and can cause really quite a lot of problems for the town in a, sh in a very short period of time. And if that person doesn't want to get better at their job or if that person um, doesn't want to leave their position, it's not easy to get them out. Whereas if we, have, if we appoint somebody and they're not great, well yeah, we can go in and we can say, you have to go to this training, you have to do something to do a better job, and ultimately, if that person is really not responding well, yeah, we can let that person go and do it before the da any damage you know, is done. So we're really weighing two risks here. Um, I think that the risk of having somebody elected to that position who doesn't do a good job, that is a, a much bigger risk to the town than having some than having a, a select board, perhaps, you know, influence that position in a way that is improper. Um, and you know, when, when we talk about what that might be, it's it's pretty nebulous, like what the select board would actually do. And I think if you look at the history in Vermont of this of these positions, um, that sort of behavior is extraordinarily rare. Whereas people coming into that position who are not qualified is, is far more common. Um, so I think we are, we are ready in, in this day and age. And, and remember, you know, these positions were set up a long time ago. And it probably made, I'm sure it made a lot of sense 200 years ago for the town clerk to be someone elected by the relatively small group of people who lived basically in the village of the town. Um, but in 2024, I don't, I don't think it really makes sense. And the trend in Vermont over the last number of years is more and more towns are moving to appointed town clerk positions for exactly these reasons. We're, we're not alone. This is, this is what's going on, and there's lots of good reasons behind it. And I hope you'll vote yes to change this position to an appointed one. Thank you. Is there other discussion? Yep, come on up. Article 28. Hi, I'm Mimi Bursing. I'm the assessor in Worcester for the town of Randolph, registered voter. Um, and I am still undecided on this vote um, as a resident and as someone who works in the government. So my question is because my relationship with the town clerk is very symbiotic. We share a lot of the same duties as such as like, so does like the finance. Sorry, here we go, sorry. I have extreme stage fright, so just bear with me. Um, oh, very big, panic attack. So, um, thank you. So, um, there's a lot of us in the departments that share a symbiotic relationship with the town clerk, um, more so than the treasurer. And I want to say we're voting for two separate positions, right? Town clerk separate than the treasurer. Um, when Emery steps down, which he will do, we will be appointing someone, anyways. So with that process, will the rest of the town people, I mean, um, workers, have a say in who gets appointed, or will it just be the select board? That's my question. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for the interesting question. So with most positions that are vacant, there's a process we go through um, and we advertise it, get names in, go through that process. And then there's a, some level of public hearing on it because it's decided at the select board meeting. 
Um, and so I think it depends on the position that's being filled, but it would make sense in this case to have some folks on a screening panel or on some type of a process there by which we look at their skills, what they, you know, what they can bring to the table and how that meshes with the needs throughout the town. So I would say yes, there would probably be some role there. Thank you. Martha Hafner again. Um, I'm doing the same kind of thing. I'm looking at what's before us and wondering, is there a way that these could somehow be merged? Could the select board select some candidate options and then let the voters vote? You're shaking your head no? I don't know that that's a process that's used. I, we'd have to look at the legality of that. Um, so the answer is that uh, the select board, or at least Ms. Broussard, is not certain of the legality of doing, doing a hybrid system like that. But it's clear that the position, should it become empty, will be filled by the select board. Um, an election will follow, uh, if I understood the first answer. I'm going to add a oh, hang on one second. It depends on what the decision is. So if the decision is to put it appointed, there would not be an election tomorrow. Right, that's right. Give the authority to the select board. The select board will go through a process, narrow it down, and make a decision. If it's not, and it, and it stays unelected, then yes. When Emory steps down, the select board would choose the candidate, and then it would come back to the voters at town meeting day the next year. Thank you. So my PS would be, I'm just in general concern in the number of different scenarios that I see voters being left out of the equation. And so I would like to somehow try and encourage that vote. voters still have a say. Thank you. <coughs> so I am Bruce Tucker. So I have a general question. Um, does the Vermont League of Cities and Towns require that the individual who fills these roles, uh, town uh, clerk and treasurer, have to live in Vermont or in Randolph specifically? Where, where does that Where does that come from? I mean, it just seems it's like. Pardon? It's in law. In law. It's in statute. All right. There's a statute. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Come on up, Mr. Ward. Yeah, um, Jerry Ward, but I'm on the budget committee again. Um, I'm really wrestling with this question. Put that microphone right up. I'm hearing great arguments on both sides, and I've been, for months, I've been wondering how I would vote on this, and I'm still not sure. <laughs> but um, I will say that the analogous people who are elected by us are the budget committee, and I think it's a process that works pretty well. So that's in favor of having some publicly accountable individuals doing a function that we delegate. The piece that I want to just bring up is that I think there's going to be some unintended consequences by voting for the it's articles 28 and 29. Um, and it's going to be related to what happens with Article 30. If, if we start stop having any other votes here and it all goes to an Australian ballot and we don't elect the town clerk or the treasurer, then I think a year from now, none of us will be here because who is going to come out to vote for the budget committee? 
<laughs> so I, I don't have an answer to it, but I think it's just one of an unintended consequence that I want to point out. And maybe those of you who believe in town government and town meetings um, will think about that too. Thank you very much. Ms. Tyler, come on up. Thank you. Hi, Stephanie Tyler. I'm still on your select board as well. Um, so um, part of the reason why I am in favor of, I voted to put this article up to vote today, um, or these two positions particularly, um, is because we're looking at the Orange County Sheriff's Department situation right now, and that's really motivating to me that we can see the consequences of an election um, and having someone in this position that would not be able to um, fulfill that position or could just decide not to show up at all. Um, and that would leave our town hanging. Um, so we would have no power really, or it would be a really long process to work through trying to hold that person accountable if anyone was elected. Um, so that's definitely, we can see kind of those consequences that happen. Um, and so that's where it puts it in jeopardy. Um, and like we've said, the select board are elected folks, um, and obviously I won't be on the select board forever, so I am in favor of this even without having, like thinking about in the future who might be on the select board. It could be people I might not trust as much as I trust our, our current select board. Um, but I still think there's a lot of checks and balances in this and a lot of public input that could be happening. Um, and actually we get, eventually push it back to the election, the elected position if we want it to as well. That could be a vote that happens. Um, so that's why I um, voted to put this article up to vote today. Thank you. Ms. Mizuko, hang on one second. I want to see if there are, I see you back there, and you're entitled to speak twice. I want to make sure there are no other uh, first time speakers. Ms. Rice, please come up. Nancy Rice, I just have, I just wondering if, I mean this seems really basic, but could someone explain to us the duties of the town clerk as opposed to the treasurer? Um, because I'm a little rusty on that. Probably the select board person. Well, Mr. Matthias could do that. He's sitting right here. He currently has oh, both yes. jobs. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Yeah, come on. I'll uh, take notes, I guess. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Matthias. So, currently, as it stands, town treasurer, I'm just mostly the intaker of payments uh, because Randolph already has a finance department. Town treasurer responsibilities are a little limited in terms of other, in respect to other towns. I do sign off on payroll and AP warrants, all those kind of things. So you do need to know, um, ideally have a banking background as treasurer or um, some kind of certification experience to that regard. Um, understanding of maths. The town clerk, uh, is, that's the election capacity here. There is um, marriage licenses, death records, land, uh, birth records. The land records so is the primary uh, responsibility of town clerk, and that's deeds, uh, wills, anything that goes into the land records. So um, it's a lot of paperwork uh, in both respects. Town treasurer is mostly the one that intakes payments so that finance can double check my work and make sure that nothing nefarious is happening. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, the responsibilities that go into that in the daily routine. I don't have that list in my mind at the moment, but it is lengthy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Other discussion? Okay, we're gonna open the floor to people who would like to speak a second time. Ms. Mizuka, come on up. And of course, you can also speak for a first time. 
We won't stop you there. Thank you, Joyce Mizuko. Um, the way that I got the position of town clerk and town treasurer was back in 1997. Um, the then town clerk and treasurer was Doris Bowman. She had decided that she was going to retire in the middle of her term, and she was going to retire January 1. The select board put out an ad in the paper advertising the two positions, because it is two positions. The clerk is one elected position, the treasurer is another elected position. In that ad, the select board listed the qualities and qualifications that they were looking for in an individual. So, um, at that point in time, I was working um, with the visiting nurses at the time, and I was becoming unhappy with the work I was doing there. And looking at that advertisement, I was intrigued by it, because um, I looked at the qualifications and the duties that they listed, and I looked at it and I checked off, yes, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. I believe that in the, in the current scenario where um, Emory will be resigning if he gets elected again, that it puts the, the, the position in, in the situation where the select board will get, be given the opportunity to appoint a person. And I believe that there is someone else in the town of Randolph who might be interested if they really knew what the position was about. Because that's how I got it. You know, I looked at it, I, I, I looked at the qualifications and, and the duties that they had listed, and I said, hey, yeah, I can do that. The drawback to the position is that, yes, you have to stand election every few years. Um, you know, Randolph has the opportunity to change that from being a three-year to a one-year if you want more control over who the individual is in running for the position. Um, Randolph had the situation way back in 1974, I believe, where they elected uh, an individual to be clerk and treasurer. That individual stayed in office for one month and resigned because that person realized they were not qualified to do that position, they were unable to do it. And that put the, uh, the select board in the position of appointing somebody. And in that case, they reached out for Doris Bowman. And Doris Bowman served over 24 years, almost 25 years. Um, so we had a similar situation. The select board had to appoint a clerk and I was appointed. Once I was appointed, I had to stand for, an, for election at the next election. So I was appointed in January, and I had to stand election in March. And then after that, I had to run for office every three years. So I believe that it is possible to find an individual who resides in town, who has the qualifications that we're looking for, in the case, you know, when we have the scenario of if the select board is given the opportunity to do an appointment. Um, the drawback to being an elected official has been pointed out, that you can get somebody who's not qualified and you cannot get rid of them until their term is up, unless that person is resigns. Um, but I still strongly feel that there, there is an individual out there. If you can advertise uh, and let it be known that this is what we're looking for. These are the qualifications that are needed. Um, because the, the role of the clerk is far reaching. I mean, you've got your vital records. You have your land records, which, um, you know, if you, if you own a home or property, you have to have that um, because you're not going to get your mortgage or anything else unless the information for the land records are done properly. You've got your dog licenses, which are required every year, um, and, and these are 
you know, duties that are laid out by statute. The clerk is required to, to, to license the dogs. They're required to issue full licenses uh, for, for marriage licenses. They're required to handle elections. Um, they, you know, they, they are required to be part of the Board of Civil Authority, which acts as um, for managing uh, the elections, but also in doing tax assessment appeals when people have a uh, disagreement with the listers as to the value of their property. They're part of the board of abatement where if an individual has a cause to appeal to have their taxes reduced or totally eliminated, um, the, both the board of civil authority and the board of abatement act as quasi-judicial boards when they are hearing, hearing such appeals. So there are a lot of technical things that have to be done, and, and every day is a, something different that needs to be done. But it does need somebody who has an attention for detail. And, and if you put the information out for what you are looking for, I believe that you can find it. So that's why I truly believe that if you handle it correctly, you can find somebody who can be elected to the position who will want to be there. Um, so I, you know, I still strongly feel that, that you should vote no for this question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm just making another call to see if there's more discussion on this article. Um, I do just want to point out that we did actually advertise that the election was up, um, and the only person who submitted a petition for, the, for either of these positions is actually Emery. Um, and so we have put a call out to Randolph asking people to step up um, to put in a petition, and no one stepped up. Um, also, it's if we think about the the traction to this type of position is elected, um, as an elected position is, it could, you could have a job, and then on Tuesday you could not have a job anymore, um, depending on how elections go, and that's a really hard way to live life. It's really hard to get a mortgage um, when you're in elected position, and that's your income, um, and so it's a really hard way for folks to feel comfortable um, and take that risk of becoming an elected position and then possibly not having a paycheck anymore um, because of a vote changing. Um, and so I think that's also a huge detergent, a deter, detergent, <laughs> it had happened had once, um, deterrent um, to folks stepping up. And as we were moving forward, um, it's, it's hard as a younger person to take that on with families um, and just possibly not be able to pay bills or buy groceries the next day for your kids because um, your paycheck's gone. And it doesn't pay that great, so we're not going to have a lot of heavy savings um, in this position. So it really does narrow the, the amount of people that we could pull from. I think having an appointed position feels more comfortable um, knowing that if you're showing up and doing your job, um, that you're going to stay there um, and have that position. Um, and as far as select board, I mean, I, I mean, I love you, Emery. I barely talk to Emery. I say hi and steals candy. Um, and uh, he talks most, uh, mostly is the day-to-day -day within the town hall um, and, um, and through Trevor, our town manager, whoever that might be in the future, too. Um, so looking down the line, big time. Um, I just, um, I don't think the select board has a huge influence on this person. I think creating it as an appointed position will actually set us up to have a really qualified person um, step into this position. Thank you. Other discussion? Come on up. I'm also gonna sit, because I also have a terrible stage fright. Uh, my name is Mary Mitchell. I'm the assistant town clerk and treasurer since last June. And I had a couple points that I wanted to share. One, just to preemptively say it, because I've gotten quite a few questions about this, I am not going to run for the position of town clerk because I'm very new. And the general consensus is it takes roughly three years to become 
fully trained in everything that you need to know in this position. And I wouldn't want to put that on people, you know, not knowing nearly enough that you would require of me. Because I care enough about this town to want to make sure that if I do a job, I want to do it well. That being said, if we stay elected, uh, and I don't want to influence people in one direction or the other, it's totally a decision of the town. If we stay elected, my only concern is that the person has a couple qualities that Joyce absolutely had, which is what made her so wonderful for those years, and now as she helped train me as well, is that they really do care about the town and that they understand that they're coming into a group of people that I have seen is really a wonderful like team. It's I've never seen a group of people that work so well together and have all these departments. And even when there are differing opinions on something, everyone can team up and come together on a conclusion to help the town. And it's really a wonderful thing to see. So if someone comes into the position and they're elected, they would need to be ready to join that team and want to work as a partner to it, despite the fact that they would be their kind of own sovereign land. Um, the other thing is they would need to feel as confident as Joyce did that they can take on all of these responsibilities because I'm not in a position to provide the necessary training. And that's just one thing I want people to consider is Joyce, I'm sure, would be willing to help in Emory while he's still here, but that's help for only so long. And that's help that I can't provide because I'm still too new. And I would want to make sure whoever comes in as a new clerk can do their job 100% and give you exactly what you deserve to be given for service because I wouldn't be able to step in and help in that regard. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I just want to sum up a couple things that you've heard. You've heard about the changing of the job. Um, and as we look at the way legislation is going and requirements, that's not going to get easier. Um, this position not only needs to know what's going on today and how things have been in the past, but they've got to be able to adapt to what's coming. Uh, the value of these records and the value to the town of them being handled correctly is immense. I don't know if you've ever gone to a town outside of Randolph that may have had a person that was brought in through an election that didn't want to play with the other players. It's miserable. Uh, and then you find you need a document and they point you to a pile and say, it's in there somewhere. Good luck with it. Not a place we want to be. I believe you've heard how, how complex this position is and where it's at. And I think that's key to this. And getting somebody in there, getting them trained, and making the investment as a town in that training and bringing those skill sets up and keeping them up is no easy feat. But remember, if they're elected, the select board has no say. We can't make them go to training. We can't require certain office hours. We have, we have no say in any of the performance of that office. So while there's some nerves there about the select board having a say, there's also a pretty other, a pretty high risk on the other side of them not having a say in what happens to this position. So, you know, those are two different things that we ought to be thinking about and weighing in on this. I, for one, support this. I believe your government ought to be open and available to you. I believe your records ought to be organized and available to you. And you should have a clear expectation of what you're going to find when you walk through that door and ask a question or have something you need. And I think the only way we're going to get to that is for there to be some standard that's set, and that can be set by the select board. Thank you. Is there other discussion? Ms. Rice. Sorry to talk so much, but I just have a question. If it's too low paying, can't you 
make it, make it pay higher? <laughs> Thank you for the question. Right now they set their own salary. So they put it themselves. Um, Ms. Versar, would you like to answer that question? Um, if you just use a mic. In the same way, we don't set the office hours or the or the standards for a town clerk, town treasurer. The select board also doesn't set the salary in the budget. The budget that comes in from them. So, if it's uh, too low, it's because they set their own salary too low. Um, so no one can be heard unless you're using a mic. Thank you for your question or your answer. So who sets the salary? You set your own salary? I set the proposal and then the town approves it. Ah, okay. So it's not preset. It was sent in a proposal to the select board. Is that correct? For the general fund to then be voted on and approved by the town, yes. I could have increased my salary by $25,000 and said, please say yes, but that would have been a fair bit. When I started the position, it was $42,000. Now I currently make $59,000. I have asked dozens of people if they're interested in the position. The one qualified person in the town who said they might, said they won't even consider running if it's less than 72, I think that was their out figure. So then is the select board, should the vote go for, uh, to the position that they are supervised by the select board? The select board would be willing to set the salary according to the candidate's request? Please. <laughs> um, so what happens when you hire a position that is Part of the select board's responsibility is there is a job specification and a salary range that goes out. The candidate comes in along with the others, you narrow it down, you get to that one that you think is awesome, and then you enter into negotiations, and the salary is set during that process. So it's not to say that we have a dollar value in take it or leave it. There's a whole process by which we have that communication with them. Uh, but that does have to fit within the general fund budget that gets passed by the voters. Thank you. All right. Further discussion? Mr. Sackwitz. The other, the other piece of this, which we haven't um, spent much time talking about, is the treasurer position. And while they're separate um, articles on the morning, um, they're, they're connected because, as, as you know, and, and I think I've heard, we have a single individual who fulfills both those roles in town. Um, and we haven't talked about the treasurer position yet, but just to kind of Get a little, to, to get a little bit ahead, I think it's important to talk about it even though we're not at that point, point in the warning yet, because the, the treasurer position is actually a, a more technical position than the clerk position is in some ways, and actually requires more financial savvy, and, and a financial background for the treasurer position is actually much more important. And if, if if we are looking for someone to be the clerk and the treasurer, it's really going to be the treasurer parts of the job that are going to be the harder parts to find somebody who's going to come in fully able to do that role. And um, I don't, if, if I'm wrong, Joyce, please let me know. But uh, my understanding is that Joyce in the past has supported um, moving the treasurer position to a appointed position um, for those reasons. The way the roles work together in Randolph, um, neither position is, is sort of meaty enough to be a full-time position on its own. Part-time positions are very hard to hire um, in, in these kinds of situations. So we kind of have to do both or, or just, or, or, or neither is what I'm saying. Um, because of the way 
our, our town government works. And if, if other folks have comments about this or have other opinions, I, I think we should know for sure. Um, I think we should hear from them. But this is my understanding that if we were to move the treasurer position alone to be an appointed position and leave the town clerk position as an elected position, it's gonna create difficulties in how we actually staff our town government. And if we keep them together, both appointed, one of the things which we really are going to have is a lot more flexibility in terms of how we manage the workload in, in the town offices. And one of the things that um, Trevor has done a really great job with over the last few years is figuring out how to make best use of the staff that we have currently, how to um, grow that staff, how to move around responsibilities so that we're using the folks that we have in the most efficient way. And if these positions are appointed rather than elected, we'll have a lot more flexibility in terms of how we actually um, staff our town hall, which means more efficient government, less costly government. And I think, I think the benefits there are, are, are again, will um, outweigh the benefits and costs. <laughs> there we go, thanks. Thank you, further discussion? You may be ready for the question, but I'm going to see. Oh, we're going to let, if, if there's no objection, um, although she's spoken twice, um, we'll let Ms. Mazuko speak once more because she, her, Mr. Sackwitz stated her position. <laughs> Is that all right? All right, come on up, Ms. Mazuko. We, we really don't want people speaking three times, but it seems <laughs> fair. Thank you. Um, Joyce Mazuko, um, in, in commenting on what Larry said, um, the budget for the town clerk and treasurer is combined. On, on the budget. And so therefore, if you end up having two separate people as a clerk and a treasurer, you're gonna end up having to have two different salaries for an individual. There are ways around that. You could have your elected clerk and you could have your um, elected or appointed treasurer and then each could appoint each other as the assistant, and therefore you can still have one salary for the individual. Um, but the, the, the um, comments earlier regarding who sets the salary for the, the clerk or the treasurer, ultimately everything in the budget falls into the hands of the select board. The select board controls the money in the town. And I can tell you during my tenure as clerk and treasurer, um, I began at a salary of, I believe, $22,000. And uh, the select board, and I never um, objected to the salary that was put into the budget because overall, um, I felt that the select board was being fair whenever they, they uh, gave me salary increases. There were a couple different times where um, I did comment after looking at the Vermont leagues and cities and towns salary comparison for um, different positions across all the towns within uh, Vermont um, that my position uh, for what I was being paid here in Randolph was significantly lower than what was um, shown in the survey that uh, the VLCT had shown and the select board chose to, to raise my salary accordingly. So overall, yeah, I had felt that the select board was fair uh, in setting salary, but ultimately anything to do with dollars within the town is in the hands of the select board. They are the ones who ultimately approve the budget which is presented to you. Thank you. Thank you. Any last comments? Okay, 
I just want to tell you, oh, come on up. I'm Christine Settles, and I live in East Randolph, and I had to leave for part of this conversation, but I just have to say, I feel like these last four questions on the warning are really an effort by the select board to take away the people's opportunity to weigh in. And I recognize that we elect the select board and that there's not a ton of competition for those peace places. And I recognize that we elect a lot of people and there's not a lot of action, not a lot of people saying, hey, I want that role. I would love to see our select board make a better effort at getting people to town meeting and getting people involved in the process because that is part of the beauty of living in Vermont and having this direct participatory possibility and I want it around for my kid too and I would really hate to see town meeting gutted particularly after we just recently made the change to having town meeting on Saturday and we haven't had the opportunity to have very many of those to see whether people will carve the time out of their busy lives to come or not. So I plan to vote no on these measures and I hope other people do too. And I recognize that it makes life more difficult for our elected officials. And I hope that you can continue to do your jobs as well or better than you have been. And I will be looking at my own life for how I can support you and the government of Randolph. Thank you very much. <laughs> Other comments? So I'm, I'm assuming there's no other comments. Um, we're, we're going to vote on Article 28. And I thought I would just give you a little bit of an overview of how we will do that today, okay? So I am going to proceed with a voice vote, which you're well familiar with, um, but I want you to know the process, which is this. If I have any, any doubt as to what the proper result is, or if I think one of you might have doubt as to what the result is, Robert's rules requires me to abandon the voice vote and do a standing vote, okay? Where we will ask the Board of Civil Authority to help do a count. So we rely on voice votes to move the agenda forward, but if it's not uh, obvious, if the answer, if the, if the vote isn't obvious, then we will move to a standing vote. I want to tell you two other powers that you have. A single person here can just demand a standing vote. So one, of you, one person can ask for a standing vote. Seven of you can ask for a secret paper ballot. And we are probably prepared. We've got index cards and pencils. So if seven people want a secret paper ballot, that can also be done. And that's for all of the following articles. But I thought we would give it a try with a voice vote and uh, see where it lands us, OK? Um, so are you ready for the question? The question is on the adoption of Article 28 that the voters shall authorize the select board to appoint a town clerk as provided by 17 VSA section 2651E. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Nay. <laughs> I'm going to have a standing vote <laughs> um, because I'm not sure, I have doubt. Um, so if I could ask for three members of the Board of Civil Authority to come forward, and um, if I could have those index cards from Forrest McGregor and the pencils. No, uh, we, don't, no we, we don't need the index cards and the pencils. What was I, what was I thinking? All right, we need three, board, three members of, of civil authority.
It looks like we have two. Yeah, okay, I'll be the third. So what we're gonna do, yep, we're gonna have, we're gonna divide the, the group into three sections. Um, I have not heard seven people, I have not heard anyone request a paper ballot. Yeah, you can. Would you, would you like to? I would like a paper ballot. Is there anyone else? Yeah. 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 Okay, do we have seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, all right. So I will take those index cards for Forrest. All right, Emery. Go uh, hand out pencils, will ya? If you could turn my mic on. Can you turn this on? Is this uh Oh, okay. This seems like a convenient break, but I'm going to give you instructions, so if you could all stay with me. Okay. We need some, if I could have your attention, please. Um, we have some uh, index cards going around, and we have pencils going around, and these guys are working as fast as they can. Um, now, if you want to vote and you are in the balcony, come downstairs. If you are not a registered voter of the town, please come over here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Raise your hand if you do not have a pencil. Okay. Pencils. You'll also be able to share pencils. That's an easy one. All right. Now, raise your hand if you do not have a little slip of paper. Okay, way back there, back in the back. Back, back row, who has the paper? Looks like it's coming your way. Yeah. Hey, Forrest, can you bring some paper to the people in the back row? Way in the back? Or Jessamine's got it? Okay, I'm gonna ask, we're not gonna vote until everybody has what they need. P pencil, right here, Th these folks have, these, these folks can you share? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna look around, so, Would everyone who plans to vote please sit? Okay. I just want you to raise your hand if you still need something to write with. Or write out. And I now raise your hand if you need a slip of paper. Okay, everybody has supplies. <laughs> Great. Okay, everyone please be seated who plans to vote, except for Ms. Hafner, where is she? Come on to the front for me. Okay. The four of you are non-voters, is that right? Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Emery? Would you come down here to handle this column? 
Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, he, we can vote because it's. Did you get one? I will. Got a piece of paper? Here. Thanks. Yes, please. I will. Yep. Okay. I'm going to reread the question to you. Article 28. Shall the voters authorize the select board to appoint a town clerk as provided by the statute? Okay, that's the question. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to reread the question to you, and you're going to either vote, um, let's say, yes or no. Those are your choices. When we do it orally, we say I or nay, but don't do that. <laughs> say, say yes or no, OK? So go ahead. Write your response, write your vote on the piece of paper, and hang on to it. Shall the voters authorize the select board to appoint a town clerk as provided by the statute? <laughs> Write yes or no. Can we put 28 on them if we're going to collect them for another one in the month? No. Okay. Yes or no. We're going to give everybody just a second, okay? All right, I would think everyone has had an opportunity to vote at this point. And so the four of us are gonna make our way up the aisle to collect your ballot, okay? Stay seated. Do we not have to be checked off the checklist? No, thank you though. Please stay seated. And if you can stay quiet, that's even better. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Here we go, ready, go. <laughs> Good, I was just thinking about you. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> All good. We'll take them. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Did you get them? You got them? All right. Have all of the ballots been handed over? Have all of the ballots been handed? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, a few minutes and we're gonna count them. So now is your opportunity to use the restroom, do some jumping jacks, whatever, okay? Should we be passing? Some can count and some can. Uh... Come on, come on up. Let's all meet up here I've at the got table. Okay. Oh, you got one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. No. no, for fuck's sake. Does Forrest have, does Forrest have index cards? Um, no. That's a sticky one. over so you're not, yeah, thank you. Just so you're not in the... So how should we do it? Should we put them, let's pile them into piles, okay? Yep. First. Oh. Can't read what that says. <laughs> 
someone has literally sealed it shut. Henry, you have index cards, index cards for next month? I have these cards that don't have the stickiness on them. Great. Okay, we're going to use them next. Yeah. Just when you're on the record. BCA never <laughs> trashes <laughs> What? <laughs> this is being recorded. I am recording the minutes for this. Seriously? Hold it in half. Why? Put it right here. Because we will record a blank. <laughs> 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 them and you guys monitor me okay yep. sounds good but this is a blank and there's one blank so okay you got there Mark. all right so I'm gonna count and you watch one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve So I'm not, because my brain might yep, yep, count a yep, yes and yep, I understand. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, <laughs> six, <laughs> seven, eight, I understand. <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, much harder than sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. That was a good call on my part. <laughs> One blank. <laughs> wow. Let's put these in a safe location over here. What are these? Those are the oh, yes they put them on. Wait, what are those? <laughs> those are the yes folks. They're all in the box. Oh, okay. All right. We'll get plastic bags to then put each into. So do we have index cards? Okay. Instead? Good. All right. So, would the, yeah. would the two of you mind sitting in the chairs? I was wondering what they were. So this is a really proud moderator moment. The vote was very close. The no's have it, and the article has not passed. 
And I'm going to tell you the vote. It was 42 yes, 44 no, and one blank. <laughs> We're going to move on to Article 29. And I have captured my board of civil authority <laughs> up here on the stage. OK. Article, article 29 is a similar article, not the same, but similar. So let me read it to you. And again, like Article 28, this has to be moved to the floor for discussion. You're not required to do it. Um, Article 29 says, shall the vo voters authorize the select board to appoint a town treasurer as provided in 17 VSA section 2651F? Is there any motion? Thank you. Did you catch that, Emery? Yep. That's been moved. Is there a second? Seconded. Michael Papp. Michael Papp. Point of order. Thank you. Yes. Can this be moved to table since it's connected to the other? Uh, so would you like to have, I think, so would you like to have no discussion? Is that what you're suggesting? Okay, and what do you mean by moved to table? To not vote, to table for vote time. Yeah, you can. So let me, let me, let me pull out my, my notes about what, what in Vermont is colloquially known as Passover, right? Um, it, it has been moved and seconded, um, and, but, but we haven't discussed it. So this is an objection to consideration. Okay? And so you are objecting to consideration. You do not need, we do not need a second to object to considering it. The effect of not considering it is we would move on to the next article. There cannot be any debate about the objection. It can't be amended. And two thirds of the body would have to vote, would have to object with you. Okay, so we're going to have a voice vote right now. And it is, uh, oh, I see a couple hands, but there's no debate on the objection. So, I'm sorry? I do not wish to debate. I'd like to know if we don't debate or consider it that way, what will the conclusion be? What, what will the consequence be? Will that automatically happen? <laughs> no. No, if, if we, we're, we're, we have to vote now, right now, on whether to not consider this at all. Yep, and if you don't consider it now, we, n no action will be taken at all. And we will move on to Article 30. What that means is the status quo will remain the same. Okay, so this Article 29 will not be passed. It won't be lost either. But um, voters will still select a town treasurer. OK? So again, we're voting just on an objection to proceeding to take up Article 28. Uh, 29. I'm sorry, 29. All those who object to considering Article 29 say aye. 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 Those opposed to the objection say nay. Nay. I don't think you have two thirds. I think people want to discuss this article. <laughs> Understood, and I'm glad you raised it. Um, so Article 29 has been moved, and it has been seconded. Is there any discussion about Article 29? 
Mr. Webster, do you have a comment? I was going to adjourn, move to adjourn, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You certainly are within your rights to do that. Um, Article 29 is open for discussion. Mr. Ward, come on up. Yeah, Jerry Ward, it seems to me there shouldn't be much to discuss there, but really, what the reason I'm in favor of tabling and the motion is that it's been pretty clear that the two physicians have been linked for a long time, and there's good reasons to continue linking them. And with that being the case, I think we should be tabling the treasurer one the proposal also. That's simple. So just to let you know, you may, not to complicate things, but you may, someone, anyone, may move to postpone indefinitely action on Article 29 now that discussion has begun. That motion to table it forever, or <laughs> just table it, requires a second. It is debatable, and um, a majority may pass that. So moved. Second. Okay, so I heard Ruth Tucker. She has moved to postpone indefinitely any action on Article 29. Can I have a, is there a second? Did you catch a second? Say, yell your name. Okay, great. Johnson. Matthew Johnson. Johnson. All right. So there's a motion before the body to postpone indefinitely action, discussion on Article 29. And that is on the floor, and you may debate that. But you may not have much to say about that, but you might. <laughs> Shall the voters postpone indefinitely any action on Article 29? I'm not seeing any discussion. So I will put the question to you. Shall the voters postpone indefinitely any discussion or action of Article 29? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, and we will move on to Article 30. <laughs> I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Uh, okay, and so are you. So Article 30 um, reads, shall the town of Randolph vote on all public questions by Australian ballot? So you've been doing some voting today from the floor. This, this article would um, move questions like the ones you've been voting on here today to Australian ballot. Um, the Australian ballot uh, you can look up online why we call it that, but it is the, the ballot that you're familiar with and that you'll be voting on on Tuesday at Town Hall. So all of these other articles are, are voted on by Australian ballot, but we still keep some articles uh, that, that we vote on from the floor. Would anyone like to speak in favor of uh, the article? Thank you. We do have to have a motion. Awesome. We have to have a motion, it, or not. <laughs> it's up to the body. 
um, you, to, thank you so much. So to even discuss it, we would, someone would have to move it and someone else would have to second it. It's been moved. Is there a second? Joe Voci has seconded it. Thank you. Article 30 is now open for discussion. Mr. Voci, please come up. My reasons for being in favor of this article, as, as we, as we uh, see here at town meeting today, my, my reasons for being in favor of this article, as we see at town meeting today, we have a population of 5,000 people, of which 89 of us chose to come out here today. Due to, due to financial times that we've had in recent years, we have a pandemic, and we're just paying what it costs us with inflation. Most people have to still work on Saturday. Um, me, I was in my office this morning up at, 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 at uh, Central Vermont Medical Center at 6 o'clock this morning at a construction project moving along, and I had to leave to come here. But more often than not, I can't make it here. But what I can do is, is I can offer an absentee ballot to be able to be able to cast that vote. Um, I can show up on Tuesday before 7 o'clock to be able to cast that vote. But a lot of folks just can't come out to town meeting. I don't think this dissolves town meeting in any way. I believe that we can have a town meeting and still discuss, like we're discussing today, what's going to be on the budget or what you're going to vote for on Tuesday. If, if, so choose. So that, that's my reason in favor. Is, is, to me, it's a democratic way to allow everybody to have, have their voice when, and as, as we talk about police departments, as we talk about budgets, as we talk about our select board or our treasurer or, or, or any position, treasurer and town clerk. So that's what I have to say about it. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Come forward. Mark Kelly. Um, I'm, I'm just here to say that um, more important even than good town government is good town community. Good community is, is created by face-to-face -face discussions, by getting to know the people that you're working with, the people that you're living with. And the town meeting is a, is a place where that can happen, it happens rarely, once a year, and uh, it, it's, it's our chance to see each other in, in action, see what, see what people are thinking. I know on the last question that we voted on, I probably went back and forth between the, the, the two sides maybe five times deciding yes or no. Uh, and all that because of hearing other people's good reason. We will not have the the benefit of that good reasoning if we don't have a time meeting. Thank you. I have Ms. Mizuko next, and I see you.
three, there was a question for the sewer district to vote their budget by Australian ballot. And four, for the water district to vote their, ballot, their budgets by Australian ballot. And at the time, there was the question of whether or not to have all questions voted by Australian ballot. And there were very strong opinions both ways for having everything Australian ballot and for having everything remain as a town meeting where everything was voted on the floor. And eventually, there came to the compromise of having just the budget questions being voted on in Australian ballot to at least give the opportunity for more people to vote, to at least have a say in the budget part. Um, but there was very strong opinions to remain to have the public questions remain from the floor of the meeting. Um, and I only point this out because I think that there will be problems in the future if you vote this question and say yes. That only solves the problem for voting the question for the town as a whole. It does not solve the question for the three other districts. Thank you. Thank you. Come forward. Thank you. I think on the voter rolls, I'm listed as Margaret Whiteneck. I said Peggy Whiteneck previously, so. Thank <laughs> Might you. I want to make a note of that. Thank you. Um, I think that town meeting has a role, an important role, whether or not there are Australian um, ballot issues uh, or town, town meeting voting issues. When I come to town meeting, I don't necessarily know what's going to be voted on. Uh, at town meeting. I come to town meeting because I want to be an informed and active uh, member of the town, not necessarily because of, of, I'm voting on a specific thing. Um, I, I can vote on an Australian ballot and still value town meeting whether or not there's any uh, vote taken at the town meeting because I can become an informed voter by the discussion that, that happens at town meeting. So I think town meeting has a value, and I know that, that having an Australian ballot will expand the um, number of people who are able to vote on an issue, and I think that's a value also. Thank you. My name is Elliot Papp. I just have a clarifying question. Um, if we vote to move all votes to Australian ballot, does that mean we will not have town meeting anymore? The group, the town, can still have a meeting for discussion, but any vote would then be moved to a ballot. But we can still discuss what we're voting on on the ballot. As far as I understand it, that is correct. The someone else uh, may have other information. What I, as I understand it, what would be lost is voting from the floor, as as you do today, by item for some items that the select board may put on the warning and for items that you all may put on the warning. <sighs> budget items are always by Australian budget, uh, by Australian ballot currently, and that will remain the same. And some bonding issues must be done by Australian ballot. That won't change. Ms. Rice. Ms. 
we had the system where some young person run around and answer this. <laughs> to uh, actually talk with each other. Put, put that microphone up. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's important to actually talk with each other, and sometimes people bring up items under other questions if they've lasted that long. So there's that part, too. Just mentioning that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kelly, I think, have you spoken about this article? Okay, let's just give other people who have, I'm sorry uh, for getting you up. Let's have other people who have not had an opportunity to speak. I think Ms. Broussard, I saw and then I ignored. <laughs> I won't take it personally. <laughs> I think there's some confusion out there on this article. And it's not bringing town meeting to an end. And there's no attempt here by the select board to gut participation from people. The challenge is, if you look around, we have less than 2% of the registered voters of Randolph sitting in this room right now. And rightfully brought up, some of them are working. Some of them have little kids. Some of them have sports events that are taking place today, other priorities. The conversation was, it didn't seem fair that only those people who could attend a meeting on a Saturday morning could make the decisions that the rest of the town had to live with because their schedules didn't allow them to be here. The intent was to allow the conversations to still take place, people to gather, you can express your opinions, we can have the whole conversation, but the vote itself goes so that everybody in town has an opportunity to cast their vote. Seemed like a way to get more people involved and to get a better representation of what the town as a whole wants to do. So, this discussion that's taking place right now, all the conversation, everybody weighing in, all the education of each other's viewpoints and whatnot would still take place. You just have all the different ways through absentee ballot, going to the treasurer's or the town clerk's office, going to the offices on the on Tuesday to vote. All those opportunities would be there to help people find a way to get their vote in also. Thanks. Thank you. Well, Mr. Kelly, hang on one second. I want to give, I see you, <laughs> and uh, first-time voters, first-time speakers, Ms. Tyler. Yeah, go ahead. Um, part of the reason why I support this um, more as a mom, a working mom, I should actually be uh, in my business right now, speaking of business owners um, in town who are also residents, not all of them are. Um, they're all working right now. Um, they cannot leave their businesses or shut them down because they would financially collapse um, if we did that every time. Um, but looking around the room, I can count um, maybe five parents of young children here. Um, that's it. Oh, if I count myself, maybe six. And maybe there's a few people I'm not sure if you have kids or not. Um, that's very, very limiting for people in my situation. Um, I normally, last year, I actually came uh, during a snowstorm with all three of my children. If you were here, you remember that because they were loud and obnoxious and everyone gave me looks that I was here. Um, and that's just not really feasible to do. And so we were asking people in my situation to not have a say in what's happening in our town. Um, flipping over to my select board role that I've had this year, I, um, thinking in my head, I could think of at least 20 people who asked me about what the votes are, asked me questions outside of town meeting, um, and talk to other people as well about what the information actually is and that those conversations are happening um, and can continue to happen here, but they are also happening in spaces that are not here. Um, but they are not allowed to have a say because they couldn't make it today um, on these other, uh, these other floor boat, floor boat um, um, articles. So that's why I believe this is a good opportunity to offer a voice to everybody who would like one.
Thank you. Come on forward. Maria Pavlisi. I think this is an existential question. And I think those people that, uh, if, if, this is, if this is a question that only these people are going to make, I don't think that's fair either. I think this is a, a question that needs to be brought up before the entire time which we haven't presented. We can't do statutory. You can't do statutory. So, so with that in mind, and with what I said in mind, I believe that we need to think about how communications are important with resulting voting and how it's changed things. I, 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 I think we don't, I think the, the, the question of communicating with each other is, is, is a problem in this country. And I think particularly uh, in this age of making things simpler and simpler, I do believe that there are people out there that could be here very well. And I think it's their problem, I'm gonna say it that way, that they're not here. Not everyone, Every, you know, there are people that have jobs that require them to be there. Um, but I think there are people that um, could be here. But I think as we let go of the voting, uh, what, 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 um, what we vote on in these town meetings, we get less and fewer and fewer people coming. And, and I think it's really important in the character of Vermont, and I think it's an important as, as, as leading this kind of voice throughout the country. And I, I really uh, get very disappointed when we uh, limit and eliminate things that uh, have been important and uh, continue the process of growth and uh, understanding between people. Thank you. Come on up. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, there's been a motion to call the question. So let me tell you a little bit about calling the question um, for people who don't know what that means. Uh, it means it, voting to call the question would, would uh, end debate um, and require a vote on the substantive motion. So the, to call the question, we would need someone to second that. Okay, we have a... We, we have a second. There cannot be any debate on this motion. No amendment and two thirds of the, of the body must approve the motion to call the question, okay? So calling the question cuts off debate, further debate. Um, all those in favor of calling the question say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. 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 The ayes have it, and so we will proceed to vote on Article 30. Last vote of the day, people. So again, my plan is to do a voice vote, but the rules require that if I have any doubt as to the result, or if I think even one of you has doubt, that we move immediately to a standing vote. Again. Seven voters can demand a paper ballot. One person can demand a standing count from the beginning. I request a standing count. There, okay, we, we shall do a standing count. Thank you. Um, to do a standing count, we are going to have, I think Jessamine and I can do it. Um, together, one section at a time. So one of us will both count and then we'll compare notes. Yeah? Okay. okay. 
Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do, if you are not a registered voter, to please move out of the seats. If you're upstairs and you want to vote, come down. <coughs> Emery, if you want to vote, take a seat. Oh boy. I'm going to come down there. Hang on. Once everyone is seated, we will have the vote. Um, this is on Article 30. It says, shall the town of Randolph vote? on all public questions by Australian ballot. Once we do the vote, you know, we'll ask all those in favor to stand. And the key is, you have to remain standing until we count you, okay? So don't sit down, don't leave, just stand and stay standing. And remain seated if you oppose the motion. Okay, is that clear? All right. Article 30, shall the town of Randolph vote on all public questions by Australian ballot? All those in favor, please stand and remain standing. All right, let's go. Let's do this section. This is, we'll call this A, B, and C, okay. Me too. Stay standing. Please stay standing, thank you. Sit. Thank you. Why are you so fast? Because I'm not doing this with Martha after. Did you see what I did there? But you can't, you, you're good, okay. All right. All those opposed, please stand. So we're going to count me and you. One, okay. two. Thank you. This is section C. Okay. Stay standing if you would. I think I have eight. Eight. Great. Uh, we might have to walk. Okay. Tim, are you standing? Standing? I have 18. I have 17. Let's count one more time. One. I have 18. Okay. 
Okay, you can um, sit while we add it up. Oh boy, that's a lot of math for 26, me. 26, 36, 40. I'm just gonna do it myself, okay? So yep. 26, wait. So 26, 36, 40. <laughs> okay. Good. Thanks. Am I done counting? What? Am I done? Yeah. <laughs> The no's have it, and the article is lost. And I'll tell you the vote. Those in favor, 35. Those opposed, 40. OK. We have um, a little bit more to do, and that is to do any other business proper to come before the meeting. Ms. Gwynn, come on up. Let me hand you this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Explanations from the select board in the Herald, perhaps, um, about what they're doing. We feel that we don't know what they're doing most of the time, and we would very much like to know, and we don't know a lot of times how they're spending our money. Um, um, we we understand that they only meet once a month, but it, it's, it's pressing, we think, a, a number of us, that we should know more about what they're doing. So that's, I'm, I'm finished. Thank you very much. I just, um, uh, well, I just want to say, um, Ms. Gwynn said that the board meets once a month. Um, are, are, the, are the meetings, um, where do you post notice of the meetings? Everywhere. So, uh, select board agendas are posted in three public spots. Right. Oh, COVID rules, they're at the, the town offices, they're on the website, they're out on the front porch forum. They're sometimes augmented with other physical postings, but those are the ones required right now. So there's um, not only are the agendas out there in advance, not just for the select board, but for a lot of the committee meetings, um, they're able to be attended in person or by Zoom, and the link is on the agenda to attend by Zoom. They're also recorded and you can go out and watch those after the back two. Um, sometimes Tim's folks are at the meetings, sometimes they're not. Usually you'll find there'll be some write up about what was discussed and what we did at those meetings. Um, there's a lot of, well, we don't control the reporters. So unfortunately that's not ours. Um, you know, we've got it out there on video. You can watch it yourself and make up your own mind about what we said and what we discussed because two people, you know, I can tell you I disagree with the reporters sometimes in their statements about the meeting. So usually a phone call, we'll have a conversation and, and come back in line, but um, we can't control that. And uh, I think we've done a very good job at getting this stuff out. It's on front page forum ahead of the meetings, what's gonna be there. There's links there to it. There's minutes that get posted. There's all kinds of stuff. If you have a question too, 
a lot of folks aren't too bashful. I don't see any of the ones that are in that realm, but a lot of them aren't too bashful about calling me the next day to see what we talked about and why and what the whole detail was. So my number is published, but. Thanks, yeah. I just, yeah, come, come on up. I just quickly while we, I had a little bit of other business since uh, I just want you to be aware about something about town meeting. Um, if you have a really good idea that you think we should enact, right? Say you want uh, all of the schools to put solar panels on, on the buildings or whatever, whatever your idea is, you can come to me and I'll help you write an article that you can put on the warning to be voted on. And again, some of them must be bought by Australia, Australian ballot. Some are voted by the floor. But if you have an idea, get in touch with me about how you might be able to pursue that through the power you already have. Just wanted to make that offer. <laughs> My name is Amy. Inga Krempa, um, I just wanted to recognize that maybe there would be more people here, but it was not listed in the paper. I got the information that we have a meeting from someone else. And that was actually Emory. So they might want to make sure it's in the paper. Thank you. I, I, I did, I, thank you. I, I'm glad you're here. I did see it in the paper, but um, we'll, Stay in touch with, with your town clerk to, to get that warning. That's the other thing, the book that you have, uh, you can ask the town clerk to mail you a copy in advance, and, and they will. Come on up. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Can I ask for a referendum? Um, you can ask for whatever you want. Um, I would like to bring to the assembly uh, a question to put a, ref ref put a referendum up uh, for, for a vote, and that's regarding um, the war in Gaza. I'd like to ask. I'd like to ask for a um, ceasefire in Gaza. A vote on that. So, um, any vote that the body has is not binding, of course. You could ask people's opinion. People are not necessarily required to answer. Yep. What would, go ahead. So that's what I just like. I just, uh, I think it's a, a big issue in this country, and I think it would be, uh, other towns do it, um, other states are thinking about it, and I'd like to um, have a vote. Yeah. So it, again, you should reach out to me so that we can get an article warned, perhaps, if there's something that's germane. Um, to do that. Other business. I see hands. I've got one, one minute. I've got this other speaker. But come on up. Sorry, I raised my hand. You, we, you, you got it. You got the floor. Um, my name is Molly Mullen. I am a registered voter. Um, formerly known as Harness. My dad, Mitch Harness, took one last run last year before he died just a couple weeks after town meeting day. I am running for select board this year. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, please find me before Tuesday. I can be reached email, phone, however you'd like to talk to me, voice your concerns. Um, I would all love your votes on Tuesday. Thank you. Thanks very much. Greetings. 
Thank you. My name is Patsy French, and before we adjourn, I think we owe a debt of gratitude to Kelly, <laughs> to our town manager, to our hard work in the select board, our hard working police department. So thank you to all of you. <laughs> and the budget committee. <laughs> Okay, other business. Uh -oh. Quickly, I just want to say thank you to whoever was responsible for identifying the individuals to whom our town report was um, made in honor of, the Butterfields. They are so deserving. Well done. Here, here. Uh, just from last, I just wanted to get in the habit of coming up on the microphone and saying thank you to the people who we appreciate. Um, as someone who's on the Board of Civil Authority and the Elected Justice of the Peace, thank you for your vote. Um, I'm on the Water Committee, I'm on the Conservation <laughs> Committee. This town only works because we work, and I appreciate everybody who showed up today. I know it's not super convenient. I mean, for anybody, really, um, democracy is a huge pain in the ass. And I really, seriously, right? And I really appreciate the people who have shown up. I hope we can encourage other people to show up, especially because we will be voting from town meeting next year, as well as this year. Oh, I also work at the library. You probably know that I fixed most of your computers. <laughs> I do just want to say thank you to all the people we've already thanked. Thank you to you. Thank you to the people who are going to come to vote. There's more positions and ways to help out in town than we have people to help out in town. So maybe if you don't come to town meeting and you can't do some of those positions, you think about ways you could serve. If you've already served and you're done, thank you for having already served. I just wanted to say it's difficult. We appreciate it. It's difficult. Thank you. Thank you. There's a long list on page 11 of, of people who contribute um, to keep our town running. Uh, hi, Tamara Morgan. Thank you for reminding me. I would like to thank, I know they're not here, um, Michael Penrod for his years and years and years and years and years of service on the budget committee and doing a bazillion things for town. I am here mostly today to make sure that he did not get nominated for the budget committee <laughs> because he has done his time. Um, but I would encourage again, as Jessamyn said, if you have a skill or an interest or anything, please be on a town committee because we're graying out rapidly and most of the town is run by the same five people or so. So it would be awesome if we got more people involved. Thank you. Thank you. Hi again. Um, town Mr. and Assessor. Um, <laughs> we're still going through our townwide reappraisal. And yes. I would say if anyone has any questions, comments, Concerns, please come to me. Um, I have office hours at 8 to 4 Monday through Thursday, but you can always give me a call or an email and we can set up a time that works for you to go over and discuss anything that you want to discuss. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm Iris Edwards, Vice Chair of the Select Board, but also one of your two representatives in the General Assembly. And I told folks that I would stay after town meeting to talk to folks about things that are going on in the State House and answer questions. Um, 
did not necessarily expect we'd still be here at one o'clock. So for those of you who are really itching to get out of here, I don't blame you. But for those of you who wish to stay and talk to me about things that are going on statewide, I'd love to hear your questions and talk about those issues. Thanks. Thank you. I've got a couple more speakers, and um, there is a motion to adjourn. Um, would you kindly withdraw the motion to just allow these last two people to speak? <laughs> I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm not going to labor right now. I am going to make something available to you if you are interested. I am concerned about things that are changing in schools in some areas of our state, and I would like to make sure that those kinds of things are not going to affect the um, climate in, in, in Randolph. So if you would be interested, there's a recent released video called The War on Children, um, and I, I highly encourage all to get informed, and then we should talk further. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. yes. Uh, if there's no objection, we have permission for our, a, a speaker who is not um, a, a registered voter. Uh, for those of you who I haven't met, I'm Chloe Powell. I just hit the year mark as the executive director here, so I want to thank. down the road in Barnard. Um, but we are struggling to get people out. So please check out our calendar and come check out a show. We've got a lot of exciting things coming up. So thank you. Thank you very much. And if there is no objection, I would adjourn the meeting. It sounds like there's no, oh. We adjourned. <laughs> yes. I, Mr. Webster, I didn't hear you. We, <laughs> um, I move that the meeting adjourned, and that takes a vote. It does, it does take a vote. Um, and is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Nay. <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.